Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 24th day of September 2019. Well, let's make sure that the volume is up. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. I had it turned off yesterday when I was doing some other work on the laptop, and I uh, didn't know if I had the whole thing turned up or not. So, anyhow, I hope everybody had a good day yesterday. Today... 24, it means a six energy, so higher self influences, which may be needed because Saturn is in Capricorn. <laughs> so we have, uh, which indicates a conservative and authoritarian uh, attitude, maybe. So hopefully. It's also in the third house of communication, so that might be affected as well. So if, if you're feeling that way, you know, maybe think about. Hopefully you can think about, maybe you can't, I don't know, but hopefully think about the uh, effect you have on others and uh, how, how maybe you come across and um, maybe try to focus on having a compassionate voice today instead of maybe one that has an edge to it. So let's see, what else do we have today? The moon's in Leo and the ninth house. So again, ninth house again today. So philosophical issues. And travel and all of that may come into your mind. And uh, with the moon in Leo, it tends to be toward generosity, unfortunately, and also being the center of attention. But sometimes, especially with Saturn and Capricorn, we'll see what kind of an effect that has on it. I don't know how those two all interact with one another energetically wise. So let's see. Sun, Vulcan, Venus, and Mercury are all still in Libra, so we have the hopeful focus on balanced relationships, uh, maybe breaking through some things, but Mercury now is no longer, <clears throat> they're all in the 11th house still, but Mercury has moved into the 12th, and so that could, that has to do with endings and also psychic ability, and so what may be at, what may be at, at, at odds for you today communication wise is maybe if you're an empath, uh, you might want to avoid large groups today because you might you know absorb their energies a little bit too much and maybe uh, know a little too much. So it might be best to just sort of take a back seat if you're feeling like that and let others be out there in the mix because then you won't be having to contend with energies that aren't your own. That's no fun. Trust me on that. I've written a, I wrote a book about it actually called When Vampires Attack. And uh, I had a guy on Twitter say, because he didn't, he didn't know what the book was about. He just says, oh, I love vampires too. You know, it's like, no, honey, you really don't. <laughs> so, or maybe you do. But um, so I explained what the book was actually about, that it was about how empaths deal with vampiric energy from intrusive people when the people focus their intention in on you, you know, and an empath's going to feel it. And so depending on what that is and what that focus is, then, uh, you know, it's either a good feeling or it's not. And so that book dealt with, with how at least I deal with it uh, as an empath, how I deal with vampiric energy. So anyhow, When Vampires Attack, it's available in Kindle form. Oh, oh and it's also free to read on Kindle Unlimited if you have that. So if you want to check that out, if you are an empath and you're having trouble figuring out what all this stuff is, I, I, sometimes I think half the battle is in understanding what it is. Uh, too much of the time we spend our time in reaction and we spend too much time trying to figure out, okay, is it mine or someone else's? That's, of course, if we know we're empathic. If we don't, then we think we're just nuts, right? So and emotional and all of this, when in fact, a lot of it doesn't even belong to us. So, you know, you have to learn how to discern, and that book helps you do that. Um, I wrote another book called Empath, just plain empath. That was the first one I wrote on the whole subject, and, uh, and it also talks about who we are and what we are. And uh, I know that you'll get these 50, 50 tips to deal with, with, you know, vampiric energy or 50 coping mechanisms of being an, an empath. We have to start viewing ourselves as needing to cope. That's the first step. You, you know, it's not that those suggestions can't be helpful when you're trying to figure all of this out, when you're trying to learn to shield. But please understand, don't view yourself as an emotional basket case. You're not. 
You're simply that's more somebody that's more aware of their own source presence. And you function on that energetic level in a way that other people have chosen to forget to do. So it's really the others, in a sense, that, that have chosen uh, a less aware state of mind when they're in the body, if they're not aware of this, or if, you know, they might think, well, yeah, I knew that, you know, I knew that I had, I had a premonition or something. You're tapping into the collective awareness of everyone, you see, when you know those things. So pay attention to them. We are all empathic, all of us. I hate when things come up on the screen that I don't put there, but I hate, I hate it when, you know, uh, when I see that though, empaths are not, we are not special in the sense that, you know, we're psychic and other people aren't. Everyone is. Everyone functions on that level if they would just allow themselves to. It's just that empaths, we've chosen it and we don't really have a choice in the matter. It's just something that's going to happen. And so all of this, you know, crazy stuff. We don't need to cope with any of it. We need to get out in front of it. That's what we need to do, not not cope. There's no reason to cope. What are you coping with? It's not your stuff. It's someone else's. Just know that. Seriously, just know that. Do your shielding if you have to. You know, bring up a, a nice uh, white light around you and create a, a shield, an energetic shield. You know, give everyone no purchase, dissolve any, you know, visualize your, your energetic channels that you create with other people by just simply focusing your attention on them and let them dissolve, see them, see them dissolve in front of you. And then have a white light shield around you. Um, and have that, that, that presence where you can then know that you're the observer of these things, not the reactor or the experiencer of them. You're simply the observer. And and once you can once you feel it and you you do your little quick tests and you know it's not you, then back up. You know, emotionally, energetically, back up. Put something around you if you don't already have it around you and make certain that none of that reaches you. There's nothing to cope with at all. Okay? And and when we stop because the minute we start thinking that way, we see ourselves as a problem to be dealt with. We're not a problem because we know more, please. That's, that, that's a blessing. Even though it seems like a curse at times, it's really a blessing. So it doesn't make other people happy when you share those, not that, that knowledge, of course, they'll be like, well, there's no way that's not true, <laughs> but it is. So particularly today with uh, Mercury in the 12th house, and you're an, if you're empathic and you have this awareness, just, you know, maybe take a, take a, day, take a time out <laughs> and remove yourself from situations, particularly if you, if you uh, uh, come upon someone who's, who's expressing Saturn and Capricorn. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> so anyhow, let's get started with the first card. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. I'm going to take the 13th card each time, and I'm going to draw three to four cards. I'll decide on the fourth at the end. Then I'll draw a rune out of the Elder Futhark bag there. And then I'll do a geomancy rune to tie it all together. So anyhow, let's get going. We've chatted enough, and I've shuffled enough. So, Oh, and if it is your first time here, I'd love you to click subscribe and come back. That'd be awesome. And do check out my blog, Stepping Aside over I'm Stepping Aside.com. I post all this stuff over there as well. And uh, plus other things that you might find interesting. If you've never been to a witch blog, well, it's a bit eclectic. There's some cannabis stuff, there's there's some Reiki stuff, there's empath stuff. It's yes, it's a witch blog, but still there's other things as well. You never know. Let's take our first card. We had this one, but I but we I think we had this last week. <clears throat> the Nine of Wands. You see a man who's uh, looking back 
He's got a bandage on his head. He's clearly been in battle. Wands is about the fire element or our will. But he's looking back at the other eight wands or staffs. He's not too sure, is he? Is the battle over? Now, sometimes, you know, I mean, a nine indicates completion or endings or something like that. kind of fulfillment of something, everything's come to a conclusion. So perhaps the battle's over, but maybe we don't trust it yet. This could indicate that we have support from others, but he doesn't seem too sure about it, does he? Now, it could be like, hey guys, we dodged it. We dodged a bullet here. You know, it could be that kind of a glance, but I'm really bothered by it. It just doesn't seem to evoke trust, especially in a nine card, so I don't know. I think that there's a little bit of doubt here. So something has come to a conclusion, perhaps a battle of wills. You may have, you may realize that this may, this may indicate that you actually have more support than you know. Like maybe you look back and you're like, oh, I didn't realize I had all my friends there. I didn't realize I had friends. I didn't realize I had support. So I'm not sure what his look is, but it's never felt like it means trust to me. So like, 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 where were you? Maybe I'm out here all alone and, oh, there you are. It's like, oh, you show up now, now that I've, now that I've fixed everything, you know. So it can mean a variety of things. Nine is typically though, you know, it's a magnification, a triple aspect of, of the three. Basically it's a magnification of the three. So manifestation, certainly. But I would, I would, we'll just go with endings. Something has come to a conclusion. And then we'll see if we can get some other cards to tell us maybe a little more about what's in his mind here. Because I've just never seen this card as a particularly happy one. It's like, okay, the conflict's over. But, you know, the energy's still there, right? Yeah, hasn't dissipated yet. Well, at last, <laughs> shared purpose with the Six of Cups. I love this card. You see this X down here? Reminds me of Gebo. The seventh rune of the Elder Futhark with balanced energy exchange. Comprised of Kenaz in all directions or the torch or the light of spirit. Focusing in and out. That's what happens when we live in shared purpose. We bless one another. All, everywhere, within, without, around, up, whatever, as above, so below the whole Marianne, right? That's what happens when we live in balanced energy exchange with each other, when we see each other <clears throat> as the other side of self, instead of simply the other, which is what's going on right now. Led by someone who should know better, but doesn't. Six, again, is higher self energies mirroring today, aligning with today's energies. It's about harmony, but a greater level of harmony, not just within, but recognizing that, you know, maybe, you know, random acts of kindness are a lovely thing to do. We may end up uh, putting the third card in between the nine and the six, though. But you're still looking at a six energy here. <clears throat> It's interesting because the six is a magnification of the three. Again, I wonder if we'll get a three this time. Let's see if we can get a change here in between the nine and the six. And, and, and again, you know, just because you lay cards out in an order, it doesn't mean they need to stay that way. You know, sometimes cards talk to one another, <clears throat> especially core cards. So you got to let them do that. So if a reading doesn't seem to make sense to you, move things around. It might open it up for you. You know, I suppose it's one thing if you're, if you're thinking in terms of past, present, future, then you might want those cards to stay in those positions. But other than that, no. Nah. Not necessary.
Now, again, I just do the, thir the 13th card for randomness sake and any other reading that I do on the blog or whatever, I just lay cards out. And I could do that here, but <clears throat> I don't really want to. Um, I'm going to put this in between the 9 and the 6. We have a 7. The 7 of Swords. We see a tent in the background, tents in the background with the flags uh, flowing in the wind. What this is, is a, uh, I used to think of it in terms of theft of intellectual property. <clears throat> and I suppose, <coughs> excuse me, we just did our walk and chemtrails everywhere. Oh my goodness, hard to breathe. Um, I used to think of this as a theft of intellectual property and in a sense it is, but uh, how I see this now, how I see this now is is taking the strategy away from somebody that has clearly a, a bigger advantage. Uh, here, I think that what this is is more about someone with lesser strength trying to level the playing field. Here, um, the theft of intellectual property could be, and truly, that's what's happening here because he's taking swords is about the air element, and that's our intellect and reason and justice and all of that and balance. But here with the tents in the background, those are soldiers. And they're likely, they're likely knights that are out there and they're, they're probably going through towns and taking money and, to, and doing whatever they did, right? Uh, get it, you know, or, or con conquering something. Maybe, maybe this is a town that they're gonna go and try and conquer and take over for the kingdom, for the king. And so basically what you have here is with seven, you have, the, you have balancing shadow side with, with, with the light, dark with light. So shadow side of self with, with spirit, if you will. Right and wrong, if you will. And here he's trying to uh, level the playing field so that they at least have a chance at protecting themselves, at the truth coming out. That's another thing. You know, when you have to go and take all of this, it's because you lack clarity. You don't know what they're about to do. Now, now, basically, he's he's taking away, in a sense, their armaments. But we're really not talking about swords here. We're talking about battle strategy. If you remove that strength, then you have a chance. If you gather the facts on something, you have a chance. Particularly when something is it, when something is centering on deception. Oh, yes, something we're all dealing with right now, aren't we? So if this is not something that's of a personal nature, where maybe you've had a battle of wills, where maybe you need some clarity, you need some balance to return so that you can then live in shared purpose with all, right? So harmony returns. So peace returns. I'm not going to draw a fourth card. I don't think I need it. Do you? So we had a six then, didn't we, with the first two cards? And with seven, that's, that's six and seven is what? Thirteen. And so you're talking a four energy. Three and one is four. So you need to shore up your foundation. You need to shore up whatever the premise is, whatever the structure is, whatever your position is, maybe. You have to think in terms of what's the ground level of this. Um, when you think of a four, you can think of four also as in, in tarot as respite, um, taking a time out and thinking, rebalancing the strategy perhaps. So maybe that's what this is, especially in alignment with the seven of swords. Maybe we're talking about a rebalancing of our strategy. So maybe our approach is wrong, or maybe we need to gather more facts and so that we can we can actually give ourselves a better advantage. You know, it's difficult when people are lying to you and trying to keep you in the dark about something. And that's really in the Seven of Swords what they're doing, you know. The guys in the tents, they're the ones that you could look upon that if you're looking at our societal problem right now with respect to the guy in the Oval Office, you could look at, you know, you could look at the tents as, as representing the government, and the swords and the man representing, you know, he's taking the swords. It's the population here, the citizenry, the voters 
who are gaining some insight right now as to the antics and the criminality of this of this uh, this group of people. I, I can't even call it an administration or a regime or anything. I, I can't call it any of those things. This is a group of people that have gotten together for a purpose that none of us knows anything about. And we're expected to figure out the truth while we're being lied to. And when I see the seven of swords come into play, what that tells me is that, you know, we really are trying to figure out bringing truth to bear here. We're trying to achieve some clarity. We're trying to get some balance here and some understanding and to proceed on the basis of facts and reason instead of the lies that we're expected to believe all of the time. Oh, nothing to see here, folks. Ignore the man behind the curtain. You know, this is not a movie. This is our life. It's not the Wizard of Oz. It's not, you know, the Stepford Wives. It's not any of these things where mind control is ruling the day. When you're expected to believe that something criminal isn't because that guy says it isn't, or the group of people he hangs with say it isn't, when everyone else is saying something else, you have to pay attention to that. And you have to find a way to come to balance within. So if you're experiencing something like that, find a way to, whether it's, you know, what's going on in our country or whether there's something actually going on in your life that's this way, you've got to find a way to level the playing field. If this is at a job where maybe there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of underhanded things going on, behind the scenes things going on, where you, there's already other people trying to block people from knowing what the truth is maybe. And so you've gotta be a little savvy. You've gotta come in when they're not looking basically because that's what this guy's done in the Seven of Swords. He comes in when they're not looking, when they're not paying attention, when they've taken the eye off the ball. Now, collectively, it's not that the majority has taken their eye off the ball. It's that we can't stop looking at the ball because we keep trying to find out what the heck happened here. We think we know. We're pretty sure we know. But we need the facts. And to date, if this is a collective thing, maybe some court decisions will happen today that will level the playing field so that we can have a better idea of what's going on back here. So again, the goal, of course, is shared, is shared purpose with all and reciprocity and kindness and unity. Oh, perish the thought that we actually find a way forward together. Nobody wins otherwise. Nobody succeeds. Nobody uh, has a chance for anything positive to happen. As long as you stay in a moment of someone else's creation, defined by someone else, you must be angry at these people, these other people that you see as the other. Yeah, no, that's a choice made by someone else. Why are we following it? You know, Birkenau. We're going to do a little drawing here. The thing about runes that I love so much is that in and of themselves, many are bind runes. Most of them are. In other words, they, they have other runes contained within them. Whereas Birkino is the 18th rune of the Elder Futhark, a nine energy. Okay. One of completion again, like the nine of wands. But Birkino is about fertility and healing and family and coming back together. So let me draw this out for you, and I will show you the runes that are contained within it, and you'll see how we actually get there, really. Because when you start breaking these runes down, I'll draw Birkenau. I know. It's not good. <laughs> but at the top, we're going to see Lagus, which is flow. It's intuition. It's emotions. We also see Isa, the Norn rune, the eleventh, the eleventh rune of the uh, Elder Futhark, which is also a Norn rune, 
of the static moment or the static realm of the present moment freezes things into place. So a lot, it's also about alignment in, in source presence. And then we have a series of kenazes in various directions here. Okay. We have kenaz, which is the torch. You can see that in the center there. And that's the light turned outward. It's expressed outward to others. All right. The light of spirit. But we also have it reversed twice. So the light of spirit turned inward. The only way that we can express it outward is if we recognize it within, correct? So that's kind of uh, an interesting way of analyzing the runes. I, 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 I mean, sure, the interpretations are fine, but if you sit and you you analyze the how these runes are created and what's really there, then what you've got is is really the same thing. So I, I just always found that interesting that if you sit that if you sit and you look at the runes and what's really there. And you compare it to the general interpretations. Well, they just naturally follow. But let's go ahead and we'll do a, a geomancy rune. Now, geomancy, again, is done a variety of ways. I'm going to put this in. Uh, to, I've got four runes here. They have a, uh, a, single rune, a single dot on one side and a dual dot on the other side. This one's the water element. They go in the order of fire, air, water, and earth. And so it's going to be a glyph that has essentially four levels of dots or single dots. Here we have one dot, which is an active influence for fire. For Let's find air. Here's air. We have two dots for air, two dots for water and two dots for earth. And so I believe that's, is that Laetitia? Yes, Laetitia. So that's joy. And that's going to align well with, and I'll draw that out for you so you can see it. This is just one method of doing of doing geomancy. So you can take a handful of, of pebbles or peas or whatever. I wouldn't take too many because you have to count them. Throw them down. Count. If you get an odd number, it's a single dot. It's just how do you get, how do you create the rune? It's, it's just basically, this is my way of creating them. Uh, or, or, or if you got a, an even number, then you would put two dots down. So I just find it simpler to have four runes, you know, and I just do it that way. I don't know. Less messy and I, I'm in the dark, so I don't know. But anyway, this is uh, this is Laetitia. You could almost say it's the will to be passive throughout or to flow, the will to flow, if you will. That's contained within Birkenau, though. You know, the will to come together in harmony and fertility and love and balance and family and uh, bringing things to fruition. So in a sense, it's almost has a little bit of the nine energy to it where you're coming to an ending of something. But if you look at it in terms of the four structure, you know, the, the structure found with the number four or the four structure, then you're looking at a new type of structure with Birkenau, aren't you? One that sees us as family, as it, it embraces the collective unity that, that we actually are or the collective unified presence that we are. When we're not in form, you see, we're the creator, collectively. When we're manifested into form, we're aspects of the creator, manifested into form, while still being the creator in its entirety, which, you know, get your head around that. That's that's odd, isn't it? It's an odd type of uh, experience when you think about it. But it's the truth. And we can live in Birkenau with one another. We can live that energy, that truth, that reality. Or we can continue to be at odds with one another and not know who we can trust and, and what we can depend on and all of that. But if you look at children when they're little, they get along, don't they? They don't know any better. Or maybe they do. Maybe it's over time when ego gets to be too big that we forget the truth of who we are. Children know. Babies know. They know who they are. And they know who the other person is. It's them. Just looks a little different. And it's someone to know. It's someone to get to know. But we don't do that now, do we? 
you get older and you forget. You forget that whole idea that there's nothing to fear. And then that's all we do is fear. And then when some guy comes along and speaks to our fears in a way that we find inspiring, because suddenly somebody is, is providing the answer and is saying the same things we've been saying. It never occurs to us that maybe some of the things we think, we think them because we don't have all the facts. We don't understand the whole picture. It's, it's, if any of you remember Paul Harvey, there's a guy on the radio and he'd do, he, it was the Paul, I think it was called the Paul Harvey Show or the Paul Harvey Hour or something. And his, and he would always close with the story, right? You know, and it was, it was, and then he would finish and then you would have a pause, you take a commercial break, and then you would come back for the rest of the story. And we've all heard stories like this where you think it's going to go one way and then you hear the ending and all of a sudden there's the twist and something you had not considered. And it always struck me is that that was the true message here that there may be something about someone. Maybe you can't stand a person, but maybe it's because they've had such tragedy in their lives that they're a little broken and they don't know how to be in the world anymore. But if you knew that, would that change how you felt about them? And so I can remember hearing this periodically. I mean, I didn't listen to it. I was a, I was a child, you know, at the time, but, but, uh, when I got a little older, you know, you'd hear that and it would be like, and then there's the rest, and that's the rest of the story, you know. And it never left me that there's always something more to know about a given situation. And when the minute you hear somebody tell you not to look, oh, you better be looking. You better know that whatever faith you put in that person needs to end right that second, right that second, because they don't deserve it. So I think that we still see with these readings the need to unite. It's intrinsic within us. We Again, you see it with babies. You see it with small children. They don't learn to hate right away, do they? They just love. And that's who we are in truth. So we need to have a return to that. And now I sound like Marianne Williamson in her uh, Return to Love book. <laughs> but it's true. I know it seems cliche, but as long as we stay in the conflict, we're never going to be what we could be. It's just way too restrictive. We don't go anywhere. So in any event, whether this is happening in your personal life or this is reflecting what's going on around us today that we're all collectively having to deal with, um, I think that you can see how that type of a strategy of the seven of, uh, of uh, swords to level that playing field a little bit to try to, and you do that with facts and awareness and truth not with power and authority and control. Not, in other words, don't express Saturn and Capricorn today. <laughs> so in any event, uh, I guess that's it for today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming by. Do click subscribe. I'd love you to do that. And check out my blog over at imsteppingaside.com, and uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another, and blessed be.